hi everyone, and thank you today for joining me in the latest installment of our product spotlight series all about account takeover protection. My name is Asfa, and I will be your speaker today. So let's start by taking a look at what account takeovers are. So what exactly is an account takeover? An account takeover allows cyber criminals to pull off nefarious acts such as modifying important account settings, sending phishing messages, stealing sensitive data, and more. It's fueled by the increase in daily massive data breaches, social engineering, phishing, and brute force attacks. Hackers gain access to personal identifiable information, or PII, which leaves consumer accounts vulnerable to takeovers. With 15 billion account credentials sitting on the dark web, bad actors are buying username and passwords for a couple dollars without any hassle, which are ultimately the keys to unlocking one sensitive information. Now, ATOs can range from a variety of industries like social media to fintech and even gaming. These forms of cyber attacks have various objectives, such as illegitimately gaining access to accounts, stealing PII from malicious activities like identity theft, compromising access credentials for multiple platforms, networks, and systems, damaging the reputation of the targeted individual or organization by misusing the hijacked account, and lastly, extracting sensitive data for stealing assets like funds or cryptocurrency. Before I dive deeper, I wanted to demonstrate how ATOs really affect us. They're definitely a growing problem and the numbers prove it. ATOs are rapidly increasing with over a 300% increase since 2019. They're also known to be a household fraud where one in five households have fallen victim to an ATO. Something that's also very prevalent to ATOs are SIM swap attacks, which I'll dive into more in depth here in a bit, but it can be seen that SIM swap attacks are extremely effective with an 80% effectiveness rate. And lastly, another component of ATO fraud tactic, number recycling, with more than 100,000 phone numbers being recycled in the US every day. Now let's take a look at how exactly ATOs happen. So a successful account takeover can be simplified into four steps. So for the first step, the fraudster will compromise the user's credentials. They'll usually begin by going through an automated script to attempt a username or password combination across many accounts until one works. Second, the fraudster will test if the accounts actually work. We'll take the login credentials and other stolen details to use them in the intended system to see if it's valid, current, and provides access. They then poke around to test the level of access given. Third, the fraudster will bypass MFA. Now that the fraudster is armed with those stolen credentials, they will then bypass any MFA associated with the account. This step varies based on the security system and hackers use a range of different methods to bypass MFA, such as brute force attacks or social engineering. The last step, Fraudsters here will now maximize the attack by accessing higher value accounts. Often the final step in the account takeover is to up the ante by using the access gained to dig deeper into accounts connected to the stolen one. By doing this, fraudsters aim to break into an even higher value account to obtain much more sensitive data and bigger payoffs. Once the account's compromised, the bad actor often changes account settings, passwords, login names, security questions, and other key account credentials. Unfortunately for the victim, the actual account holder, they are now locked out of their account. Their attempts to regain access become much more difficult as all the security prompts are now different and controlled by the fraudster. So let's take a look at some common fraud tactics. First, phishing. So phishing is when cyber attackers trick people into giving them their personal information like passwords or credit card numbers. They do this by pretending to be trustworthy sources such as notable companies like UPS or Netflix or other popular websites by sending messages that look really real. These messages often ask you to click on a link, download a file, or provide your information. If you do what they ask, they can use your information to steal your money, take over your account, and commit other kinds of fraud. So it's important to be careful and not trust just any message you receive, especially if it asks for sensitive information. A fun fact I wanted to call out is the term phishing actually comes from the word phishing, F-I-S-H-I-N-G, where attackers cast their fraudulent messages like bait, 
hoping to lure unsuspecting users into taking malicious action. What's, alter, what's also interesting to know is that smishing and vishing are also a concept of phishing. Smishing refers to SMS or text, and vishing refers to phone calls, robocalls, or voicemails. Here, you'll notice a lot of these images contain different forms of phishing. You'll see it come through as really believable emails or sketchy text messages. It's important to always make sure you're familiar with who the links or messages may be coming from before clicking on anything. Double check the sender's email address, URL, or phone number to ensure they're legit. Always be skeptical of unsolicited messages and unexpected requests for personal information. Once clicked or interacted with these fraudsters long enough, the damage could potentially be irreversible if the fraudster ends up stealing your personal information. The second type of ATO fraud tactic I'd like to address is social engineering. Social engineering attacks are another term used to describe phishing. It's a method used by attackers to manipulate and deceive people into doing something they normally wouldn't do or revealing sensitive information. Instead of relying on technical vulnerabilities like traditional phishing, social engineering exploits human psychology and tendencies such as trust, helpfulness, or curiosity. It involves creating convincing scenarios, impersonating trusted individuals or organizations, and using psychological tactics to gain the victim's confidence. The goal is to manipulate people into divulging confidential data, granting access to systems, or carrying out actions that can be exploited for malicious purposes. In essence, social engineering is the art of manipulating human behavior to exploit security weaknesses. The third form of fraud tactic I'd like to touch on is SIM swaps and port out fraud. This is where a person can get mobile carriers to get a new SIM card or port a phone number to a different phone carrier or different phone number. SIM swap attacks normally begin with an old fashioned phishing scam. Email phishing is still surprisingly common, but hackers also use fake login pages, apps loaded with spyware, fake ads, and malicious attachments to gain access to your accounts. Once they have that, all it takes is knowledge of your phone number and some personal data to execute that SIM swap attack. It's important to note that phishing isn't the only way to start a SIM swap attack. Hackers can get your info from leaked social engineering, leaked data, or even physically lift it from your devices. So how does a SIM swap actually work? It usually happens in four broad steps. First, the fraudster gathers confidential information like user credentials. Then the fraudster calls phone service providers and impersonates the victim. Next, the fraudster is able to dupe the phone carrier into switching victim's phone numbers onto a new phone. And thus a fraudster has successfully executed a SIM swap. The attacker can use that to carry out fraudulent acts like bypassing security measures such as SMS-based verification and access your accounts, steal personal information, or even carry out financial fraud. Now, this also means that they can gain unauthorized access to online banking accounts, social media profiles, email accounts, and other sensitive platforms. In addition to financial loss, victims may also suffer, suffer reputational damage and emotional distress, meaning the damage done can often be irreversible. The last fraud tactic I like to discuss is number recycling. Number recycling may not necessarily be malicious, but it definitely proves to be a challenge because it can be something that's used in combination with phishing. An interesting thing to note is a study was performed by a group of Princeton University researchers who investigated the potential security and privacy risks of a recycled phone number. They found number recycling enables malicious actors to perform upwards of eight different attacks. By cycling through available phone numbers on a carrier's online change form, a malicious actor can specifically target previous owner's PII and hijack accounts using text-based password recovery. They can also use recycled phone numbers to obtain previous owner's passwords from data leaks and then use those passwords to hijack accounts. Now that we've talked a little bit about what each tactic looks like in the real world, let's take a look at account takeovers that show up across different industries. First, e-commerce. This industry is comprised of online retailers and marketplaces that face the risk of account takeovers where fraudsters gain control of user accounts to make unauthorized purchases or steal payment information and other personal information. Next, the FinTech financial services industry, which includes banks, credit card companies, and payment processors, who are the prime targets for ATOs. 
These attacks are aimed to gain access to users' financial information, perform fraudulent transactions, or steal funds. Then you have social media industries. So social media, like the other industries, are not immune to ATOs. Account takeovers on social media platforms are a significant concern due to the potential impact on individuals' privacy, reputation, and personal data. Attackers may aim to gain control of user accounts to carry out malicious activities like spreading misinformation. And lastly, gaming. ATOs in the gaming industry are very prevalent as gamers often have valuable in-game assets and virtual currencies tied to their accounts. Attackers may seek to steal these assets, disrupt gameplay, or other fraudulent acts of theft. The rapid growth of the e-commerce industry has attracted the attention of cyber criminals. As more consumers shop online, the potential rewards for successful ATOs, such as financial gain or access to personal information, increase. This can largely be attributed to e-commerce accounts storing sensitive information like payment details, shipping addresses, and purchase histories, which can make them valuable targets for attackers. E-commerce has seen its fair share of ATOs sweeping through the industry, with 90% of ATOs losses increasing in 2021 alone. This ultimately leads to a bad online experience, and 66% of U.S. consumers agree that they wouldn't buy from an online shop where their account was compromised again. With ATOs rapidly rising in e-commerce, it can come as no surprise that one out of four e-commerce retailers are not even equipped or prepared to handle ATO attacks. Account takeovers can be observed as a major risk for fintech, especially in the current rapidly transforming tech environment. With one of three fintech logins attempts suspected as ATO attempts, it's very telling as to why we're seeing experts analyzing a 79% increase in ATO attacks, specifically in the crypto market. Besides the tech forward financial services that seem to be springing up everywhere, there's also the digitalization of legacy financial institutions. Considering the incredibly high potential for financial gain, user accounts on financial platforms are heavily targeted. Users expect the platform they are engaging on to protect them against ATO attacks. And in a highly saturated market, platforms that are unable to fulfill this requirement risk losing customers to competitors, seeing that there's been an 131% of ATOs having risen in the first half of 2021. Account takeovers in social media are also a significant concern and have become increasingly prevalent in recent years where one out of four fraud victims said their ATO scam started on social media platforms. And as ATOs are quickly proving to be a widespread problem affecting millions of users worldwide, it's no surprise that the dark web and forms are dedicating themselves to the sale and exchange of stolen social media accounts, which indicates that there's a demand for compromised accounts. It's also why there's no surprise to see that 40% of victims say their PII was stolen or compromised and misused in 2022. But what surprised me the most, at least, was seeing a whopping 70% of social media users having been locked out of their social media accounts. And two thirds of the respondents reported that the criminal continued to post on their account as if it was their own after getting kicked out. It's worth noting that not all account takeover attempts are successful. Many social media platforms have implemented security measures to protect users and detect suspicious activities. However, attackers continue to evolve their methods and techniques, making it crucial for users to remain vigilant and take proactive steps to safeguard their accounts. In the gaming industry, ATO fraud costs gaming over $1 billion, which is no surprise as to how two out of 10 online gamers get hacked on average. Now, two out of 10 may seem like a small number, but when you factor in how many gamers actually exist globally, it's estimated to at least be 3 billion video game players worldwide. So when you do the math, that's a whopping 600 million people. Furthermore, the major gaming storefront, Steam, has seen 77,000 ATOs in just one month alone. ATO fraud poses a significant threat to gaming companies for several reasons. First, it can be really damaging to the reputation of the company. When users discover that their accounts have been compromised, they may lose in the trust in the company and stop using its services. Second, account takeover fraud can lead to financial losses, as fraudsters can use compromised accounts to make purchases, which can result in chargebacks and lost revenue. Third, account takeover fraud can result in regulatory penalties, 
So for example, online gambling companies who are subject to strict regulations and failure to protect user accounts can lead to those fines and legal action. Fourth, in online gaming, a large ATO attack could result in disrupting an entire gaming community where certain accounts play a key role in the community. This is particularly true in games where social interactions are important and losing trust in a gaming platform could lead to the end of a gaming community. For example, popular account takeovers using to, to disrupt, distribute malware. And lastly, account takeover fraud can lead to data breaches where fraudsters who gain access to user accounts can steal PII, including names, addresses, and credit card numbers. So let's take a look at how Telesign fights ATOs. Before I dive into our ATO demo, it would be remiss of me not to mention multi-factor authentication. MFA, in combination with our comprehensive ATO solution, is a must when it comes to fighting account takeovers. Telesign's verification solution delivers phone-based verification and two-factor authentication using a one-time passcode sent over SMS or voice message. MFA is essentially a security measure that adds an extra layer of protection to your online accounts or systems beyond just a username and password. MFA requires the user to provide two or more different authentication factors to verify their identity before granting access. So there are three main types of authentication factors used in MFA. So there's something you know, this factor involves knowledge-based information only that the user should know, such as password, PIN, or answers to security questions. Something that you have, so this factor refers to a physical device or token that the user possesses, such as smartphone, a hardware security key, or an authentication app that generates unique codes. Something that you are, so factor where the authentication relies on biometric characteristics unique to the user such as fingerprint scans, facial recognition, or iris scans. With MFA implemented in your authentication workflows, you're able to achieve increased account protection, decreased risk of compromised passwords, protection against credential theft, and most importantly, peace of mind, knowing that there's an extra layer of that protection. Our comprehensive ATO protection uses phone ID to provide the highest quality of data access to carrier grade data through a single endpoint and comprehensive market and country protection. Our phone ID solution checks for critical ATO signals like SIM swap, porting history, call forwarding, and number deactivation. But how does phone ID specifically help for ATOs? Well, first it strengthens authentic authentications. You're able to add an additional layer of security into MFA workflows to detect ATO risks in real time. Second, you detect risk at critical moments. By layering ATO detection across your customer journey, critical risk detection safeguards high value interactions. And third, it protects against number recycling. You're able to ensure your customer's phone numbers are up to date to prevent accidental ATOs when using a phone number to sign in. As I mentioned in the previous slide, Telesign's phone ID fights account takeovers by checking for ATO signals such as SIM swap, porting history, call forwarding detection, and number deactivation. Phone ID will start by checking a user's SIM swap status, where Telesign is able to provide risk recommendations such as very low, which indicates a SIM swap that's occurred 14 or more days ago, low, which indicates a SIM swap that's occurred between three to 14 days ago, medium risk, that's indicated a SIM swap that's occurred 72 hours ago, and lastly, high risk, which is the same day. Next, it will check for porting history. If there is no porting history, then none will be returned. If there is porting history, such as porting date, current or previous carrier, current or previous country, and so on, the porting history will be returned. Next, call forwarding detection will be checked to see if call forwarding is enabled. And if it is in fact enabled, it will return false. If call forwarding is conditional or unconditional, it will return as true. Lastly, phone ID will check for number deactivation and check whether a phone number has any deactivation history. If there is deactivation history present, the carrier name, last deactivated timestamp, tracking timestamp, and recycle status will return as a risk recommendation. With phone ID, Telesign provides insights and data to our customers to then go and take action on whether to allow, block, or challenge users. 
It's important to remember that whether it's breach passwords or intercepted OTPs, customer accounts are always on a fraudster's radar. By using the phone ID solution to unlock real-time insights, you're able to strengthen the authentications, detect ATO risks, and build a safer and more trusted experience across the customer journey.